Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online. Today's topic for discussion is infection and epidemiology of infectious diseases. And uh, the learning objectives for today's uh, session will be what is the definition of uh, infection and then certain related terminologies okay, which are related to infection, then the epidemiological determinants of disease causation, the different epidemiological patterns, epidemiological indicators, then little bit about what is the uh, meaning of eradication and what is elimination and what is control of an infection. Okay? So, everything is related to infection and epidemiology of infection. So, first before going on to the epidemiology, let us see the salient aspects of infectious diseases. So, when you say infection, what does it mean? So, the definition is the lodgement and multiplication of a parasitic agent in or on the tissues of the host. Okay, lodgement means it enters inside, somehow it finds a way to get inside the host or on the surface of the host and then it multiplies okay, within the host. So, this can be within the tissues of the host or on the tissues of the host. That means it can be on the surface also. And by parasitic agent, we mean all microorganisms which are capable of causing infection and later on disease. The presence of normal flora is not called as infection, okay? Because in our respiratory tract, in our gastrointestinal tract, the distal portion of the urethra, all these are always harboring some bacteria which are normally present. They do not cause any uh, disease and that is not presence of this normal flora is not called as infection. Okay? They are part of your normal flora, they are part of you and infection may or may not lead to a disease, an infectious disease. So, that means the parasitic agent can enter into the body, it can multiply in the tissues of the host, but not always infection will lead to infectious disease. So, that is the meaning of this. Another term which it will be nice if you can know is, is colonization. In colonization, the same thing, it is a pathogenic organism. That means it is an organism capable of causing disease. The pathogenic organism enters into the host, it multiplies in the host, but it does not invade the tissues of the host. Okay? And so, it does not cause any disease also and it does not elicit any immune response. So, it just enters and it multiplies. But it does not invade inside our sterile surfaces, sterile uh, body cavities and it does not cause any disease. Okay? So, colonizers are different from normal flora. Actually, colonizers are actually having a pathogenic potential. Okay? But in some hosts, they may not be causing any disease. They will just be acting as colonizers. That means, they are just present and they are multiplying. But the same organism in some other host may cause a disease. Okay? or in the same host, it may cause a disease at a later date. What is infestation? Usually, this infestation is a term which is given for those parasites which are outside the body of the host. So, it refers to inhabiting the surface of the body of the host by larger parasites. Okay? They are called as ectoparasites. Ecto itself means outside. When the body of the host is going to be inhabited, by larger parasites that is known as infestation. Okay? So, here again they will be present outside on the surface, but they will not be penetrating into the host and this infestation is acting as a way okay? and those organisms okay? or those agents which cause this infestation actually act as vectors to transmit some pathogenic bacteria or viruses or whatever it is. So, you have heard of lice, okay? the singular is louse, then fleas, mites, ticks. Okay? They all are present as ectoparasites. They can be present in the hair you know, or in, in the case of animals, it can be present in the fur. Okay? And then what happens is they may be transmitting infectious disease agents. So, this kind of uh, inhabitation of the surface of the body of the host by larger parasites is called as ectoparasites, ectoparasitism. And some of the ectoparasites can uh, penetrate into the host causing disease. Okay? Another example of this uh, ectoparasite is this Sarcoptus scabi, which causes a disease known as scabies, which is very common in the pediatric age group. And another group of organisms are the commensals. Again, commensals are nothing but the normal flora. Commensalism means eating at the same table. These organisms will be present in only one particular anatomical site. For example, the normal flora of the intestine may be different from that of the respiratory tract as well as the genital tract. 
so they live in complete harmony with the host they don't cause any diseases to the host okay but when they enter other organ systems like for example e coli it is a normal flora of the gastrointestinal tract okay but when it enters into the respiratory or urinary tract it can become a pathogen okay so as long as they are sitting in their original anatomical site they don't cause any disease but suppose they go and invade some other anatomical site or some other system they can cause disease so these are common cells the most common example is e coli which is present in the gut and some more terms are saprophytes saprophytes don't have anything to do with the human beings so they are actually free living microorganisms they are present on dead or decaying organic matter these saprophytes are present in the soil they can be present in the water and their work itself is to degrade this organic material okay and then return it to all the simplified carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and then it is returned to the soil right what are parasites parasites are again microbes which can establish themselves and multiply in a host this is what by using this term parasite uh, please do not be reminded of parasitology this is a term for use for all the microorganisms and they can be either commensals or pathogens this is what we saw earlier